So, yeah, my name's Steve Minot. Uh, I'm a member of London PM. Uh, I'm, on IRC, I'm normally ITZ on all channels apart from Freenode. On Freenode, I let my registration lapse on the NIC serve, and I'm using the same as my Git <coughs> handle there, which is STMUK. And the, all, the, all the example programs that I'm going to show you today are available on GitHub. So also the other focus on is, is, on, is on making Perl 6 quite simple. So although I'm talking about concurrency, which is generally regarded to be quite a difficult topic, I, I'm attacking it from a sort of beginner perspective and kind of going through my adventures and misadventures with trying to get to trying to draw a simple fractal in parallel. So uh, when I say concurrency, I'm, I'm going to use the words threading, parallelism, and concurrency pretty much interchangeably. Uh, it is threading, but the, 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 the abstractions that you're supposed to use for Perl 6, it's at a higher level than threading, so you don't generally deal with threads. However, there's a couple of examples where I will deal with threads a bit more at, at a lower level. <coughs> so I started using Perl about the time that Perl 5 was released, and because most of the systems I had access to still had Perl 4, I was actually quite late to the Perl 5 party. So I, I was one of the people that was writing Perl 4 and Perl 5 for a couple of years, and once I started writing Perl 5, I realized I'd been an idiot, and what I should have done is to get into Perl 5 more rapidly. So at the time, I decided when Perl 6 came out that I'd, I'd be early to the party for Perl 6. OK, why have I chosen fractals? Well, fractals are nice and simple to calculate. Uh, when I started playing around with computers, my Atari 8-bit, I was able to type in a simple program of about a dozen lines that drew a quite an impressive-looking fractal that looked like the patterns in the books. And it took a long time, but it was quite satisfying because you, you, you tweak the numbers, and eventually it comes up, and it looks just like the picture in the book. Of course, the downside is that the calculations are quite time-consuming. So when I did it back in the day, it probably took several hours to run. I, I, I ran it overnight. I remember at the time, though, I, I had a friend that worked in the parallel computing department of the university, uh, and I spoke to him quite a lot, and he gave me a lot of help just starting out with programming. In fact, I remember he told me a few things. First, I, I said, what should I avoid when I'm programming? And he said, avoid memory management, because dealing with memory leaks is difficult. He told me also to avoid threading, Although he was a C programmer and programmed threads, he said kind of avoid it because it's difficult. Uh, and he actually recommended using Perl. He said that's a good language, but he said that some of the people that programmed Perl were a bit odd. And I'm afraid I've ended up as one of those odd Perl people. I also asked him what runs well in parallel. And he paused and he thought for a minute. And he said, well, not actually very much. Generally, it's quite difficult. Then he said, oh, yes, but plotting fractals, that works quite well in parallel. And I remembered that. So when it came to experimenting with Perl 6, which has great support from concurrency that Jonathan Worthington's added, and that I would recommend that if you're seriously into this stuff, look, look up his uh, YouTube videos. He, he goes into it much greater depth and explains things a lot better than I'm going to do, which is very, mine's going to be very much a beginner's approach to it. Uh, and, of course, we, we all know that computers, you know, it's not like it used to be that every year the computer used to be a load faster than the one you had last year, whereas now it's pretty much leveled out in terms of processor speed, and what they're doing is to add more cores. And, of course, the advantage of Perl 6 is you can use those extra cores with threads. Oops, I've gone back. OK, so which fractal? Well, I've done the, the obvious one, the Mandelbrot set, and there's a picture there of Mr. Mandelbrot with his fractal behind him. <coughs> so Perl 6 is in what I've euphemistically termed performance enhancement phase, which means that generally, for most tasks, it's slower than Perl 5. There are some things that it's faster, though. Experimenting, I've discovered that mathematics particularly seems faster that if you're calculating things that use very large integers or you're using complex numbers, and it is, in fact, faster than Perl 5. So the, the computer that I did most of my benchmarking on is uh, a 200 euro one, which is the one that failed earlier. And it's not the fastest computer in the world. It's only got a couple of cores. Uh, but the basic Mandelbrot set, when I, I, I wrote it just... 
uh, uh, not as a parallel, but as, you know, just a normal program. It took about 100 seconds, which I thought was a nice round number for benchmarking and comparisons, 100. So I've used the simple direct media layer, SDL, which is a, a cross-platform abstraction layer that fits on top of other graphical libraries. Uh, on Linux, uh, the one I was using is using OpenGL, uh, and there's a Mac one as well. And I, I tested the code both on, Lax, on a Mac and on Linux, both systems, of course, which let me down this morning. Alle, die jetzt an der Stadtrumme teilnehmen wollen, die sollen jetzt bitte da sich beteiligen. Okay, enough of that. So uh, here's some actual code. So that should be pretty familiar to most people if you're a Perl 5 programmer. Uh, there are some examples, as Frog showed us a, a couple of days ago, the actual C loop now has become loop. So what was formerly a four is now a loop. So the first two lines uh, are just going through the X and Y coordinates on the screen. Uh, the third line there, there's a Mandelbrot subroutine which has been called. Uh, as you can see, it's got I in it, so it, I'm using complex numbers. Then there's some lines here which work out the color. So the color of a Mandelbrot set is a bit of a hack, that really the colors are just selected on a number of iterations in, in order to look visually attractive. So I just fiddled around with something in, or, in order to get uh, some different colors. In fact, it would probably have been better if I'd thought about this more and done proper shading. But I, I, was, I just wanted something up and running quite quickly. So, yeah, the, the actual SDL calls there uh, are pretty much directly calls into the C library. Uh, the, the, the library that I used uh, is SDL2 RAW, which, as its name suggest, suggests, is basically just a RAW inf interface to the C functions, which is... There are libraries. The Perl 5 library, for example, has better abstractions and objects, but the, the library I used is just, you just call functions. So, yeah, it basically, I just draw a point and then render the point. None of that's particularly interesting. Okay, so the actual Mandelbrot function itself uh, is a complex one, and, and that's quite a neat that looks quite neat. That pretty much looks like the formula that you'd get if you looked in a book or looked on Wikipedia. That code, I, I, I have to admit that I stole from the Perl 5 Rosetta code example. However, I felt less guilty about this when I looked at it further and discovered that the Perl 5 one was stolen from the Ruby example. So, the, the example there of the, so that's the Mandelbrot set that it's drawn at the bottom, which is quite a small one. Oh, I'm missing a slide. Yeah, so, so, so I, I deliberately chose a fairly small size, which is only 320 by 240, sort of 80s retro size, just because I, I, I'm impatient and that the thing's quite slow to churn away, and I wanted to do some simple benchmarks. Okay, so Perl 6, uh, you've got promises. Promise is uh, it, it basically the computer's promising you that you'll do, it, it'll do some work at some point in the future. Uh, the work is put on a pool of threads. Uh, it's not a one-to-one -one correspondence between promises and threads, however. There is a pool of threads, and uh, you're not necessarily on the same thread. There's a scheduler that moves, moves the, threads around, the, the, the promises and the threads around. However, you probably don't need to know this at this point. So if I was to start and just type that first line in, I'm creating a promise there, say hi. If I just literally type that first line in and ran it in a, in a script, uh, I wouldn't see anything return to the screen at all. You have to await for the promise, otherwise you don't see the result of it. So, I've got, so, so essentially I showed you two Perl files. So I, I've got a start and I've got an await. The start creates a promise, the await waits for the promise to complete. So I, I've started off there with a simple loop. That doesn't have any promises in it. And if I execute that, then I just get exactly what you expect, A123. So no surprises there. So I now drop the concurrency into the loop. So, so the I could have used start with curly braces. In, in this example, I've used do to create a block. And you notice that, in fact, I'm not getting a sort of s simple sequential execution there. 
but what it's doing is it's executing the outer loop twice before it even starts on the inner loop. So what I've got is basically stuff executing in parallel. And that loop, of course, that resembles the high-level loop that I showed you on the slide earlier. So what, what I do, first of all, is just to drop the await and the start at the top level of the loop. I've also used, you notice I've, I've used an integer there. In theory, that's a hint to the compiler, and it should be faster to execute the loop. I did some benchmarking. I think the int actually does make some difference currently. So I, I went ahead and, and ran that. I'm, unfortunately, I'm not really sure you can see this, but there's a lot of spots over it. That's a corrupted image. It's got spots. It's got you know. It, it, it's not. It, it looks quite visually attractive. You can see it's a Mandelbrot, but it's not a real Mandelbrot because there are outlying points everywhere. There's corruption in the image. So I went back to the SDL website, and of course I read, "Can I call SDL video functions from multiple threads?" No. So. I've done it wrong. I shouldn't have done it that way. In fact, it goes ahead and says that most graphic backends are not thread safe. You have to call it just from one thread. So I did. Oh, but yeah, yeah. So I ran that. That was a result on the Linux. I ran it on the Mac. It actually kernel panicked the Mac, which is not good. I mean, that is actually a problem with 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 the Mac OS itself because you shouldn't be able to just execute a simple program uh, as a user that's not root and just bring the whole system down. So that's actually Apple's problem. It's not a bug in Perl 6. And in fact, most of the code examples, when I code it correctly, it works perfectly well on the Mac and on Linux. So I went back to the Perl 6 uh, website, and I did what I should have done, of course, at first, which well, I didn't because I was a programmer impatient, just wanting to bang some examples out. And I read about the concurrency and I realized there was a locking primitive. So I just create a lock here. Uh, and then I have a, a, a critical section here which protects the plot. So that ensures that the plot only happens on one thread at once. And when I run that, that this is actually what I was hoping to show you here. Uh, which worked on my Linux system, was an actual video of, 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 of it drawing uh, Mandelbrot set in parallel because I, I, I recorded it as a Linux video and it's not, it, it, it wouldn't play either on the Mac and it's not survived the export to PDF. But what, what I'll just describe what you would have seen had it worked. So basically, normally drawing the Mandelbrot, it's like an old-fashioned cathode ray tube. It just draws line by line. Uh, that if you do it in parallel, you can actually see it drawing patches of the screen before other patches of the screen. So you've got a kind of visual indication of, of how the threadings work, which is it's a pity that, I've not, uh, that I'd probably do a live demo if I was to do this again. So, yeah, the locking works. The image looks fine. And when I did a benchmark, it wasn't very much slower than not having locking. However, you're not really supposed to use locks. Uh, there's a risk of deadlocks. Probably in my trivial example, that's not an issue. But I I'm, I'm not just coding this example. I wanted to experiment with some more of the features of Perl 6. So I decided to use a channel, which is a thread-safe queue. So that fits with multiple writers and a single reader. So the single reader corresponds to the plotting function, and the writers are, are the ones calculating, are the threads calculating the points all over the screen. So yeah, that's an example then of a channel. So I just create a channel on the first line there, and I have another promise, which is the plotting promise. Uh, the channel, I'm calling a poll method on it. Now, the poll method doesn't block, so I have to put it in a loop. And I then have to deal also with the case that the loop has been closed when it exits. Uh, and you can see there that the plot line... So, so basically, I'm plotting uh, x, y coordinate and a color. So, th this is, so that part corresponds to the plotting function. 
This part corresponds to the loop that's actually doing the calculation. So I reference the channel inside and basically send the XY coordinate and the color. At the end of it, I close the channel, which means then that the, the previous slide, that, it, that it, it's no longer going through the loop. And I then, of course, await for the promise, the plotting promise. I have been cheating, however, a bit. So the computer I've got, not only does it not work with demonstrations, but it doesn't work very well with threading because it's only got two cores. It's a cheap seller on 200 euros. So what I had to do to get better benchmarks was to cheat a bit. And I've gone, kind of gone in at a, a low level, which I probably shouldn't really have done. And I've actually set the thread pool to only be two threads. I, I was getting better results that way. So to summarize the benchmarks, the basic non-concurrent, so, so also the other thing was that I used uh, a Perl 6 benchmarking module. Now that worked perfectly all right after I actually committed a pull request to fix it. So well, it's useful anyway. Uh, so, the, yeah, the first, so the first one's 100. You can see that the broken concurrency, so that's the example that plots are kind of corrupted, incorrect, Mandelbrot and crashes the Mac, the second example, that's considerably faster. And that adding, adding the locking, which fixes it, is a bit, you know, the, 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 the third case is significantly faster, even on a not very good system. However, I was a bit disappointed to discover that with channels, uh, it was actually slower, which isn't really what, what I expected. So what to, what to do? So I just went on to IRC and I asked Maritz, well, Maritz answered my question, and I'm paraphrasing here, and hopefully I haven't misrepresented him too badly, but basically threading, as I discovered, has a lot of overhead, and the number of calculations that I was doing on my small image wasn't really enough to show any performance improvement. So the, the sort of simple solution is just to increase the number of pixels and wait longer. So I've created a bigger Mandelbrot. So I've, I've gone from the 80s to the 90s now, and I have 1040 by 768. I've also got a faster computer, and I waited longer. And I've got, of course, the image I get at the end is prettier. So, what, what, so basically, to summarize there, with a channel, it is faster for a larger image, but not significantly faster, but it is faster. So in an hour, it's about five minutes faster. <coughs> Research is continuing watch this space. I also didn't have time to add this to the slides, but I replaced the channel with, with a supply, and the supply I was getting better results. However, it's still long running, and I didn't have time to do any, benchmark, any real benchmarking. So I, I'm, I'm intending to produce future uh, versions of this talk where I, I not only do I show Mandelbrot sets, but I want to show a Julia set, and uh, 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 hopefully using supplies as well. And, yeah, that's the end result. So that's 1040, sorry, 1024 by 768. And it looks, look, yeah, it looks quite pretty, even though it takes an hour to run. So conclusions. Well, it's actually quite easy doing concurrency in Perl 6. I only added uh, a, a small number of high-level keywords. It's not like I was dealing with complex threading. I mean, I'm a typical kind of Unix guy. Uh, that I've not really done very much threading. I, I've, I've, I've used forking quite heavily, so this was really the first threading that I did, and it, it, you know, it was interesting doing that. I think it's a good selling point for Perl 6. It's not a silver bullet, though, as, as I've shown, that if you drop it in, it won't automatically make everything faster. And uh, this year, uh, so we have Perl 6.c was released at Christmas, and the intention is to improve the performance of the of Perl 6 throughout this year, and I'll be continuing to to experiment with drawing fractals in parallel. And yeah, my talk slides are, are on GitHub. And if anyone has any questions, yeah. Uh, can you show us the slide again with a channel solution? To me, it looked like a busy loop. Is that correct? So that would account for a lot of the uh, performance. Uh, oh, right, OK. Uh, yeah. So there's actually a channel that receive which blocks for a new element. Yeah. And, but it will 
thrown exception when the channel is closed. So uh, you will have to catch that exception in the end, but that will avoid the busy loop. That might improve your performance, actually. Uh, okay, so I shouldn't have used poll. I should have used receive. Right. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll try that. I was getting better results with supply. Also, with supplies, I noticed that I didn't have to set the, pr the thread pool lower. Right. So uh, since, since we're a bit late now, I think it's time to s thank Steve and... <laughs> <laughs>